In this section, we will learn what lazy evaluation is used for, and we will also implement a couple of lazily evaluated sequences. First, we will compare eager and lazy evaluation, including their benefits and drawbacks. You will see and interpret a couple of examples to understand what lazy evaluation is. After the examples, we will identify the benefits and drawbacks of lazy evaluation. In the second video, we will use generator functions to describe finite and infinite lazily evaluated sequences. Let's start with the introduction to lazy evaluation. You will first get to know two evaluation strategies, eager and lazy evaluation. After some simple examples, we will implement a lazily evaluated map function and put it into practice. We will realize that there is a drawback to the lazily evaluated map function, which can be eliminated by combining memoization with lazy evaluation. We will conclude this video with summarizing the learnings from the examples by comparing and contrasting eager and lazy evaluation. Let's describe and illustrate what eager and lazy evaluation is. In case of eager evaluation, an expression is evaluated immediately. All values are processed in an expression as soon as we have access to them. In case the evaluation of an expression doesn't contribute to the end result, its value is still evaluated just to be thrown away. On the contrary, lazy evaluation delays execution of expressions until their value is absolutely necessary. If a value in an expression is never needed, it's never evaluated. Let's compare and contrast the two approaches with an example mapping an array. In the first version, we became greedy and we use eager evaluation to double each element of an array. Note that at the end of the expression, we only retrieve the element at index 0. Eager evaluation evaluates the whole array right away, applying the ext fetero 2 x function on all five elements of the array. Once the array is computed, we access the first element and retrieve the value 2. Let's compare this to lazy evaluation. For now, except that we will use a lazy map function, we will implement it a bit later. We apply the same doubling function on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 array. Instead of using array indices, we use a different interface and get the zeroth element of the array by calling the get method of the resulting lazy list. When computing lazily evaluated lists, we defer evaluation as long as we can. Therefore, we first access the zeroth element of the original array, and only then do we apply the xfetero2x function on the one and only element we accessed. Although we get the same result, notice that in case of eager evaluation, we doubled all the elements of the list and threw away all elements but one. In case of the lazy list, we just computed the values we were interested in. Imagine we are displaying blog posts on a blog with a thousand entries and we just show the top five. Would you like to render all thousand posts from Markdown to HTML just to show five posts? Alternatively, would you like to render a whole blog post of thousand words or just the first paragraph to show it in a list view? With lazy evaluation, you can easily save resources when, for instance, rendering just those blog posts that you need. When using lazy evaluation, we first take the first two elements of the original array and then apply the doubling function on them one by one. The rest of the array is not even touched. Let's implement the lazy map function we used in the example. The lazy map function takes two arguments, an array and a function mapping an element to a result value. When creating the public interface of the return value, we will implement three functions. Get gets one element from the original array and applies the map function on it. Take takes the first n elements of the array and applies the map function on them. For simplicity, value returns the result 
eagerly evaluating all elements of the array. Notice we are using the object-oriented notation here and returned an object that has some members giving you access to the lazy sequence. This is the way how some functional programming libraries simplify handling lazy evaluation. One example for such a library is Lodash. When accessing all elements of the lazy list, we usually pay the administrative penalty of lazily evaluating a sequence. Eager evaluation tends to be faster in this case. Imagine we take the first three elements of our lazy list, then we take the first two. The map function is applied on the result five times in total. The map function was applied on the first two elements twice. In general, we have to calculate each element over and over again from scratch whenever we access them. This might seem like a waste of resources when the same values are accessed frequently. This problem can be addressed though very easily. If you recall volume 1 of this course, Deep Dive into Functional JavaScript, you learned an optimization technique there that helped you save some extra unnecessary function applications. This optimization technique records the lazily evaluated values to reuse them next time the same value is accessed. This way, we can eliminate the performance penalty of accessing the same elements of a lazily evaluated list over and over again. This technique is called memoization. If you would like to refresh what memoization is, watch the section on recursion in volume 1 of the course Deep Dive into Functional JavaScript. Let's review how one possible implementation of memoization works. The input argument is a pure function, meaning that the input arguments of f determine the result. Inside the memo function, we build a lookup table called memomap. Before calling function f with an argument, we first check if the argument exists in the memo map already as a key. When the key is found, the corresponding value is returned. When the key is not found, function f is executed and the return value is memoized. Memoization does not only come handy with recursion, but also in case of lazy evaluation. Let's implement a lazy memo map function. For simplicity, we will only implement the get method inside the return value. We will now use an array instead of an ES6 map data structure as the memo object. If the element we want to retrieve has already been calculated, we can simply return it. Otherwise, we calculate it by applying the map function on the element we wish to get. Then we place the calculated value in the memo array and return it. Let's also provide access to the memo array so that we can demonstrate the usage of lazy memo map. Let's create a lazy array and retrieve the element at indices 1 and 4. As you can see, the corresponding values are placed in the memo map. Now that you understand how memoization negates the main drawback of lazy evaluation, let's conclude this section with summarizing the advantages and disadvantages of lazy evaluation. First of all, eager evaluation is generally faster. Use eager evaluation when you need all elements of a sequence in your result. Administrating lazy evaluation Delaying the function applications and memoizing the results requires some resources. In other words, you pay some time penalty for using lazy evaluation. We win back this time penalty and more when most of the eagerly evaluated results are thrown away. Lazy evaluation does not even perform these calculations and only focuses on the results we need. When it comes to calculations, we compute all elements of an eagerly evaluated list exactly once. In case of lazy evaluation, when an element is retrieved multiple times, the calculations also have to be performed multiple times. In order to avoid this penalty, we tend to use memoization combined with lazy evaluation. In order to calculate the results, in case of eager evaluation, you need space for all elements. 
In case of lazy evaluation, you only need space for the elements you retrieve. Last but not least, a perk of lazy evaluation is that we can handle infinite sequences with it. You will soon find out about the details of this extra benefit.